Well, I guess this guitar is broken. I should just throw it away and get a new one. Oh, it's just out of tune? Well, maybe I should take it to a store and get it fixed because oh, I have a friend who plays. He can he can tune it for me. Oh, I should do it myself. OK, cool. What's happening, party people? Welcome to Blues Lawyer Confessional. I'm Jack and we're going to tune your guitar today and we're going to tune it every day and we're going to tune it before we play. We're going to tune it while we play. We're going to tune it in between songs. You are going to tune all the time because it's so simple and it's possibly the easiest way to sound better at guitar. It's being in tune. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the notes on the strings. Now, disclaimer, we're going to do a standard tuning. Once you learn that, we'll work on some extra tunings, but standard tuning for now. Here we go. It is E, A, D, G, B, E. You're going to have to memorize that. So look up at the screen. Memorize it. Okay, pro tip. We always want to tune down before we tune up. And what I mean by that is we want to approach the note that we're trying to hit from a lower sounding note. Couple reasons for this. One, it gives us the optimal tension because we keep climbing, 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 stretching and stretching for that perfect note. It's going to be snug and tight and stay in tune better. And then you're going to like that. Secondly, as your ear is it is in its early stages of listening for what's in tune, you are going to want to not have to guess, is it higher or lower? So we're going to tune up from down below. So always tune down first and then go up. That way you always know that we're going to go a little higher. If you don't know how guitar works, how strings work, here's an easy lesson, quick lesson, real quick. Here we go. A note sounds lower when the string is looser or longer, right? So little increments of looseness length makes it sound lower. When the string is tighter, when there's more tension, when it's shorter, the string, the note is higher. Longer, looser, lower, tighter, shorter, higher. Got it. Another thing we want to keep in mind is you look at the headstock. There's different shapes of heads, okay? This is the three by three shape. There's the six in a line shape. There's the four and two shape. The only thing we need to keep in mind is we want to be consistent with the way we wind our string. So the direction we turn the knobs, we need to be consistent so that the innermost parts of the string rotate. So this direction up here is tighter or vice. Alternatively, this direction is tighter. Okay. Tighter, 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 looser, looser. Okay. We're going to do a relative tuning. What relative tuning means is we tune the strings relative to each other. So the easiest way to get this started is have a friend with a piano play an E note for you, or you just start with wherever you are and just let that be the thing that it is. What I think I'm going to do is tune this E string. There, it's E plus or minus. We're going to listen to that. Now we're going to fret the fifth fret, which is an A note. Now what we're going to do is go to compare this. We're going to hit this note, and then we're going to hit the A string. See how that sounds discordant? They're like rubbing on each other. It sounds obnoxious, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to hit this fifth fret. And then we're going to turn the knob, turn the peg until we hear that harmonious chorus of A's. One thing I like to do is like tap it. Perfect. Next. The A string on the fifth fret is a D. So we're going to compare D to D. Okay, that's higher. We're going to go down before, so go lower. Hear how that sounds nice and together? The fifth fret on the D string is a G. Again, I, I don't know if that was a lower or higher. I can't tell. So I'm going to go down a little bit. Hear that rings out? Just listen. It's nice. Okay. This is going to fool you. The fourth fret on the G string is a B. It's actually pretty good. Let's just go down. There it is. 
And then the fifth fret on the B string is an E. Go down. Now I like to check with an open chord, like an E major. And it sounds much better than we did in the beginning. Here's that G. That's relative tuning. It'll get you pretty close. It'll train your ear to listen for things. That's a great way to get started tuning. The next kind of relative tuning is harmonics. At some point, someone who plays guitar marginally better than you will be tuning their guitar in a completely foreign and strange way that will excite you. And so that is probably going to be harmonics. We're going to compare string to string, and then you're going to greatly enjoy um, what happens. So you softly press your finger on the string and make a harmonic on the fifth fret of the E string. Hear that? And then we softly press our finger on the seventh fret and do the same thing on the A string. Okay, and I'll do it at the same time. Again, you listen for them to ring out with each other. Let's just make that flat to hear what happens. What's nice is you can let that ring out and turn the peg and, and just feel it merge together. It's fantastic. Okay, so E on the fifth fret, A on the seventh fret, A on the fifth fret, D on the seventh fret. Cool. Okay. D on the fifth fret, G on the seventh fret. Nice. Now E on the seventh fret, and then B. Just open string. See how fun that is? Okay, super fun. That was harmonic tuning. So cool. Okay. Little press your friends. Again, I always like to check my tuning. Again, at some point you're going to graduate from that. Again, you don't want to be in a live show and playing the tuning song. It's not fun for the audience. Okay, so what you're going to want to graduate to is a tuner. And when I say tuner, I mean a pedal board based tuner like the Boss TU2 or TU3 um, it is the most important pedal that you can ever have. If you uh, want to treat yourself to something nice on reverb and you don't have a Boss TU series tuner, please get one right now. Stop everything. Go to reverb, go to Sweetwater, get a tuner. Okay. Reasons why it's so amazing. One, it will mute your signal. So when you tune, no one will notice. Okay. So when you play, when you tune, you can talk to the audience and say, blah, 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 welcome, go visit our merch table in the back. And all that stuff. Or the band behind you can be playing sounds and being cool, and then you can come right back in and play some songs, and no one's going to care. They're not going to notice you tuned. It's fantastic. Other key features. There's buttons on there where you can change to different um, pitches, go half step down. I played for a decade in E flat, and this will take care of that for you. And there's also a bypass. I have it actually outside of my board. I have it on a tuner out there, so um, it's outside of my signal chain. Um, but you can actually have two outputs. One gets muted when you uh, stop, and the other one will bypass. So act, it'll act, act like a ABY splitter, which is kind of cool. It also can act as a power supply. So you can run a power supply into it and then daisy chain off of that. And that was a super cool thing to do in the early 2000s. I don't know if people still do that anymore, but it's a fantastic tuner. It just makes it easy. Um, as you can see, heads up display. And I just feel confident. It's so bright. I have three of them. And I'd like more. It just makes me happy. I feel comfortable with it. And it's just... It's just what I need. Um, other tuners that exist, I'm sure everyone's seen the Snark tuner, the clip-on style. If you want to use a Snark, you can use a Snark. I think, I think I'll, I'll allow it. But please turn your volume knobs down and then Snark away. 
I don't like how it looks on the headstock. But if it helps you be in tune, go for it. But personally, I'd much rather have the board based tuner. I feel safer with it. Um, it's plugged into a power supply, so I don't have to worry about batteries. And I just feel more comfortable with it. But if you have a snark, use a snark. It's all good. So now let's say you've done your basic tuning, you're, you're all tuned up and you feel good, but something just doesn't sound right. There's there's just your chords up maybe up here in the cowboy chord section. Sound okay, but then you're doing some bar chords up here like you learned from the previous video. And something just sounds weird to you and you're not sure why it is. It's probably because your intonation is a little off. And what intonation is, is it's a description of the comparison of the entire string length to the 12th fret and up, essentially cutting the fretboard in half and comparing that relative distance to the full length. Theoretically, the 12th fret should be the same exact note as the zero fret, as the open string. So the way to check your intonation is you play an open note, make sure that's in tune, pretty much dead on, and then you check your 12th fret. That's it. Now if you are finding that your 12th fret is either flat, which is low, or sharp, which is high, probably should explain that earlier. If you're flat or high or sharp, you will, depending on your kind of guitar, will adjust the bridge location to either make this part longer or shorter. Okay, if we make it longer, then this will make this note lower. If we make it shorter, it'll make it sharper. I'm pretty sure I nailed that. I'll double check in the edit, but that I think that's right. Again, different guitars handle this differently. Um, the Gibson style bridge makes it easy. You just turn the screwdriver and, you know, just a little bit at a time, check with your boss TU2 tuner and you'll, you'll sound great. Again, the better your intonation is, the better you're going to sound. Um, there's some other reasons why your tuning might sound weird. You might have, your nut might need to be uh, filed, uh, you might need to adjust your neck action. But for the most part, if you have a good open tuning and a good intonation, you're going to sound pretty good. The standard tuning went over the standard tuning E, A, D, G, B, E. Okay, you got that. There's some alternate tunings. Just discover open, you know, new tunings for you. There's, oh, there's endless tunings you can do. Popular ones that I enjoyed, just a half step down, it's you know E flat, A flat, D flat, and so on. That's great for music no one listens to anymore. Drop D, take the E string and drop that down to D. Um, the thing I like to do, just play two together. Listen from the ring out. And what's fun about drop D is you can play bar chords with just one finger. Something like that. Um, drop D, and then open tuning. So an open tuning just describes um, having your guitar tuned to a chord. So you would tune, let's say, to open D, it'd be tuned to a D chord. So you play it open, it just jangles like a D chord. Those are fun, you can look those up. Maybe I'll do a video on those later, probably not, but maybe, you can hope. So click subscribe, click like, do all those things. Thanks for watching, less fiddling, more playing.